Hello! Hello! I have returned! Welcome in, gamers! Ah! Joyo, thank you so much, gamer! Hello, everybody! Hello, 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 hello! Hello, 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 hello! <laughs> thank you so much! I appreciate it! Thank you, everyone who said they missed me! And everyone who, um said that they enjoyed the choir and everybody who watched it on uh on the twitch stream if you didn't watch it on the twitch stream that's okay because we're gonna do it today but hello i i miss streaming if i burp don't yell at me because i feel it coming on and i might be just a little a little <laughs> a little disgusting <laughs> well welcome in everybody i really did miss streaming hi Long time no see. Uh -huh. uh, so today, today we are going to be doing our off Kai review. So if you didn't know the tea, if you didn't know what's up, what's down, I have been away. Oh, uh, uh, sugar Girl Man, which thank you so much for the fire. You're not guessing, can't keep grubbers. But if you have not been around, if you didn't know the tea. I was away at Offkai Expo, and I was there actually as a guest, which was like, whoa, whoa, esteemed honor. I felt, I felt very cool. I'm not gonna lie, but I was there on a very important mission. I was given the job of directing and conducting Off Choir, which is Off Kai Expo's community choir. So today, I'm gonna talk about my experience at Off Kai. I'm gonna talk about all the Off Kai lore. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to show you guys some behind the scenes stuff for the choir. Um, I don't really talk about my job too much uh, on my Twitch. Um, because I know most people that watch me like watching me play Skyrim. <laughs> That's kind of my shtick. Is it's like, hmm, yes, yeah, Skyrim woman. <laughs> but this was something that I've been working on for six months now. A little bit over six months. And now that it's kind of finally come to fruition, I wanted to share it with you guys because I worked really hard. A lot of people worked really hard and I kind of want to, I want to honor that, you know? So let's get into the lore. I didn't take a lot of pictures. I talked about this before on another stream, but I'm not the type of person where like, oh yeah, I also did it last year. <laughs> so this is my second year being the director of Off Choir, which is very, very high honor. Big thank you to Off Kai staff for inviting me back. They thought I was so nice. They wanted me to do it twice, <laughs> but Basically, a lot of people, not just myself, but a lot of people worked really, really hard on this project. And I thought this would be a cool way to kind of show what I do when I'm not being a gamer. <laughs> and to just kind of, I don't know, you know, pray for a third time next year. Good news, they already asked me to come back. <laughs> In fact, one of the founders of the convention uh, messaged me while we were singing and was like, you guys just started and I'm already sobbing. <laughs> so there will be a third edition of Off Choir. So basically... We're gonna go into the T, okay? We're gonna go into the absolute nitty gritty. Let me see da, 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 if I can find my thing. So, how does one come up with the choir? How does one figure that shit out? So let me show you guys the lore. I do hope there's a bigger venue next year too. I do too, okay? I like the, okay. <laughs> Choir members got mad at me because I started calling the Grand Hyatt the Grand Gyat because it kind of like it's spelled H-Y-A-T-T. -T. So like, Hyatt, Gyat. <laughs> A lot of people don't know this. I mean, like I've talked about it on stream, but I'm pretty young. Okay, like not to be like, I'm just so small. I'm just so cute and small. <laughs> but um, I feel like a lot of people, because I'm a teacher, think I'm a lot older. Uh, I'm 23. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people are like, wait, but you've been teaching for six years. The math ain't mathin'. So basically, I graduated high school when I was 16. I skipped a year. And I was also pretty young, like, when I started high school, too. And then I went to college, and I graduated when I was 20, I think. And then I got my first public school teaching job. I started teaching at my college when I was eight, uh, 17 or 18. I don't remember. <laughs> and then I... Um, basically started teaching in public school when i was 20 which was horrifying by the way <laughs> you know how awkward it is when it's like oh come to staff happy hour mm, I, I i can't do that <laughs> I, i'm not allowed the staff happy hour <laughs> um and then i quit teaching when i was 23 and now i teach vtubers how to sing for a living so i do have um i do have six years experience i'm not a liar i'm not a fraud i'm just a baby <laughs> 
one of the jokes choir members made in Rainbow was there was that I was the designated adult who was a child. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's get into the lore. So this is stuff that has not been seen by the public. This is just stuff that um, the off Quai, uh or off Quai, off Quai. <laughs> I love off Quai Expo. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is stuff that only off Quai choir members have seen so far. So let's take a take a look. See, this explains why you're the way you are. Some of the weirdest people I've met have been the people who finished high school early. <laughs> I didn't develop quite right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> so let's take a look in a book reading rainbow. So you might be thinking, how does one come up with um, a whole medley? Because if you didn't know, if you weren't there, and you're going to see it in a second, um, pretty much what we did is we didn't do just like a few songs. We did a concert that was a medley of, I believe, 12 different songs that were really popular in the VTubing space. Um, because the thing with Off Cry Expo is a lot of different agencies go, a lot of different VTubers go, but they can't invite every single VTuber on the planet. <laughs> it would be really impressive if they could, but they can't, right? So what we wanted to do is we wanted to hype the crowd up for the big concert known as Off Cry Live. And we also wanted to find ways so people could have their favorite VTubers represented even if they weren't necessarily at the convention right and this year was a really big year because we had i think it was four guests from hololive um my oshi who was there <laughs> which fun story about that later my oshi is now slightly aware of my existence and that horrifies me <laughs> but um we had four hololive guests there uh which was like a really really big moment for the convention they had never had hololive guests before which is really cool and if you don't know uh because i know a lot of my viewers aren't big like vtuber enjoyers they just like skyrim <laughs> hololive is a really really big uh vtuber agency a lot of people fell down the vtuber rabbit hole through hololive myself included so i'm a big hololive fan so basically i don't know if i still have the document but the first thing we did is we went through uh, viewer or choir member submitted suggestions. So we have a Discord server, and I'll show you guys the Discord server actually. I just have to be careful. I mean, I don't think anyone's personal information is in this, it's fine. But basically, we have a Discord server, and what we did is we actually had everyone submit uh, several different songs. And you can see a lot of the songs submitted were in here, <laughs> were included. Um, so basically, we wanted to, you know, we wanted the people that were part of the choir uh, to enjoy the songs <laughs> they were singing, you know. Uh, so we had people submit some stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I really wanted to put in, but we just either we couldn't find a place for it or um, it just didn't work or there wasn't like a clear instrumental available. So like one of the songs I really wanted to put this Marine song in, <laughs> Unison, I think is really cute, but it's one of those things where it's like, it's not just a matter of will it fit in a medley musically, but it's also a matter of will it work in an SATB or soprano alto tenor bass choir format, right? We also tried to avoid using covers, even though there's a lot of YouTubers with really iconic covers, um, because last year we did include King, <laughs> because King is like one of the most iconic VTuber community songs. But this year I kind of wanted to try to not do covers as much because there's just so much good original VTuber music. Same thing with like Q. I love the song Q. Um, I'm a big fan of Mori Calliope. I also love Gooba. Um, and even though I love, um, I love this song, because a lot of it is rapped, it just wouldn't fit or we'd have to use a really small portion of it that too hidden brings up a good point japanese lyrics are hard most of the people that are in the choir do not speak fluent japanese or are in the beginner stages of learning japanese my japanese is like barely n5 level <laughs> it's not great but i'm trying to get better um so basically there were songs that like we wanted to fit in but we could like i really want like hollow tori dance was suggested <laughs> and hollow tori dance is really really cute and we could have all done the dance on stage but it just would have been those one of those things where it's like it where do we put it you know what i mean and it's not really a lot of stuff that's sung so there were a lot of really good options um but it was just a matter of one will it fit and two does it work in a choir setting if that makes sense so at one point um i don't know if i still have the document um 
I think I deleted it, but what me um, and a few people did, it was me, Karina, Braun, and I believe Lore, is we sat in Discord calls for a few days, this was back in December, and we compiled all of these songs, we compiled the BPMs for the songs, because that's important for me as a conductor, and I'll tell you why in a second, and we also compiled the key signature of the song, so if you don't know, if you're not super musical, the key signature is basically um, what scale the song is centered around, so if you have a song in let's say the key of C, I have my keyboard on, it's gonna be kind of centered around this chord. Right, if you have a song in D major, it's gonna be centered around this, and so forth and so forth, right? So that's one of those ways we were able to ensure smooth transitions, is we would either have songs that had similar keys, right, maybe from C major to C minor, or C major to C major, or we would do something that is basically called using the dominant of a key to make the transition work. So a really common chord progression involves going from one, to five, back to one, in some way. There's usually stuff in between, but you'll usually hear like a one, five, one, right? That five basically refers to the dominant of a key. So let's say for example, if I'm in C major, C would be one, D is two, E is three, four is F, and five is G, right? So if I'm doing a chord progression in C, a lot of it is going to be something like this. You can see how when I linger on that five chord, and this is an inverted five chord, but it's still five chord nonetheless, it doesn't really sound quite right, right? But when I go back to one, it resolves really nicely. So one of the things we would do is maybe if a song, um, if we couldn't find a clear transition, we would use that kind of chord right here to transition on. And we'd transition on the dominant chord rather than the tonic chord, tonic chord being that first chord. So that's how we got some of those funkier transitions to work. Also utilizing silence, right? I know with the end of, and I'll kind of show some examples of this in the score later, but there were some songs that ended with just silence. So that made it a lot easier to kind of find the transition we would put there. You know what I mean? So that was our first step is kind of going through all the suggestions, seeing what would work and seeing what wouldn't. And if it did work, kind of uh, cataloging the BPM and the key because there were some parts where we went from like zero to 100 <laughs> and a lot of those were really hard to conduct and I'll talk about what was like the hardest stuff to conduct later on <laughs> probably when we do the watch through the video but we wanted to make sure that it wasn't like too crazy so after that I think I still have this document let me switch over back to this one so over here we have our set list, right? And this is kind of, again, how we how we categorized it. And we also did, we included the main key as well as the relative key. So like, for example, D minor and F major, even though if you look at, where's my circle of fifths? Because I was actually talking about this with a student today, because I work today. So even though you might think the key of D minor and F major is like, what the fuck do those have in common? <laughs> gamer what happens is they're actually relative keys right so if you look at let's see d minor where's d minor d minor burr, 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 here's f right so this right here oh hold on you can't see it my big old hat's in the way <laughs> let me open this in a new tab here you go now you can see it really clearly right so F and D minor are relative keys, right? So what that means is even though these are both centered around different scales, right? F major is centered around F, D minor is centered around D minor, right? They both use the same key signature. Both of them only have a B flat in them. So we also wanted to include when we were kind of writing this out, not just the um, the actual key it was in, but the relative um, the relative minor as well, right? Just because that was a way we could aid transitions as well. And here was kind of the basic, like very, very start of planning is we have the BPMs here as well. We have links to the instrumentals because some of these we couldn't find instrumentals for. And we had to do, um, we either had to make an instrumental or we had to, I had to reach out to agencies and corpos and stuff to see if they'd give me the instrumental. So. With nonfiction, most Hot Live songs, they have their instrumentals publicly available, but some I had to do some digging for. So shout out to all the agencies <laughs> that were able to listen to little old me and give us the instrumentals so we could sing their songs. I really appreciate it. Um, and we also have over here kind of where we wanted to skip to, right? Which parts of the song we wanted to include timestamp wise. So that way it would be easier to kind of get an idea of what we want to do later on. 
right? You'll also see, we also had some like basic notes over here to just kind of start arranging of like ideas we wanted to have. Um, a lot of these include songs that eventually did get cut for one reason for another, so I wouldn't look at those too much. Uh, we did also have a YouTube playlist and a Spotify playlist. So people, once we did finalize this, people that were in the choir could listen to it, even if they didn't know the song super well and we didn't have the score done yet, they could just start kind of listening to the songs to see kind of like, okay, here's what's going on, right? So you all can also see that we have different parts of the songs um, highlighted. So this was basically how we divided the work for creating the score. Karina created half the score. I created the other half of the score. So I did parts one and three, and then Karina did parts two and part four, right? Originally the medley was gonna be a lot longer, which is why part three and four are so teeny tiny. Um, but we decided that 16 minutes would be too much. So we ended up cutting it to 13 minutes just because if you're not a super seasoned choir performer, which a lot of our, our uh, choir is not, and I think that's actually a really cool thing. I wanted the choir to be approachable for um, for everyone, regardless of experience level. We had some people that were like music majors, we had some people that were like pro singers, and we also had some people who hadn't sang in a choir ever before, you know? And that's how I've always wanted it to be. I never wanted people to feel gate kept, like, oh, I'm not good enough to do choir. I wanted everyone to be able to participate, you know? So. Part one was really like half of it. <laughs> and then part three and four were like five minutes together, you know? Uh, yeah, I've never been in a choir before. And you kicked ass, Rainbow. You slayed. So pretty much this is where we started. And then after that, let me see if I can show you our draft. <laughs> Hi, Kiri. Welcome in, Gamer. So once we got that figured out, we wanted to kind of see what things would sound like together. So right here, we have our layout draft. And here's the on vocal version of it. And then down below, we have all the instrumentals together too. So what I started with was literally just taking snippets, downloading each of the songs off of YouTube and taking snippets of it and seeing what would go well together. So like, for example, I don't know how loud this is gonna be, hold on. So like right here, That's our first cut right there. So I, what we would do is we would have to kind of see if we were doing cuts in the middle of the song, do they make sense? So we had to change the placement of this cut for nonfiction quite a few times. But then here you can see we kind of have a fade out that leads into the beginning of Rebellion. So that way we want everything to transition really smoothly. Same thing over here. So that way it doesn't sound too dramatic or too harsh when we have the transitions. There were also some transitions that sounded really weird in the layout, because this was the first thing we gave people, was like, hey, here's the sections of the songs we're gonna learn. One of the things we did that I thought was really cool is we held a sustain out through Rebellion into the beginning of Fact. So it sounded really weird on paper. You can hear that clash there, right? But just so we could kind of, that was just there so we could get the idea of how we're holding the sustain out on Rebellion through the start of fact. Some of these are missing also, unfortunately. Um, but this is one where it was really easy. I guess Hanahaki Syndrome is just missing. That's okay. I might have accidentally deleted it off my computer. I am admittedly not excited to finish this stream, but um, I will say uh, six, 30 to 60 gigs on my computer are just off Kai stuff. <laughs> So I am kind of ready to have a clear um, drive once again. But like here, with this one, because it was just silence afterwards, we would have that. We would have that silence and then it immediately led into Hanahaki Syndrome. Because Hanahaki Syndrome also starts with just silence, but then the acapella. Now with Planetarium, Planetarium was definitely the hardest one, right? We actually changed some of the spacing in between. So like here we have the big intro. And then we added a little bit more space just to make it easier for me to conduct. And then we actually cut out part of the song because we didn't want to include the whole thing. So that way we have this transition here. So that way Planetarium didn't take up the whole thing. Although it did still take up the sizable chunk of it. It was admittedly kind of nice the past couple days not having to think about the songs. Yeah, you did it. You're done. You're over, right? I Do they still play in my sleep? Yes. Let me actually turn my BGM off since we're, we're doing this. Hold up. So we had a lot of these transitions where we would just have to lay them out. I think the hardest one to figure out was definitely into Euphoria, into Golden Age. The conductor needs space too. No, I promise I do more than waving my hand. It's, it's, it's very technical. <laughs> but like here... 
this was a weird transition and even practicing it it was weird it sounded really good when we were in person but definitely having the sustain on into euphoria lead into golden age was one where it was kind of a bitch to conduct but we'll talk about bitchy parts to conduct uh a little bit later when we watch the video the way you conducted it was epic thank you i appreciate that so that's kind of what we started with was just giving everyone a basis to lead off of right and then the next thing we did after that was build the score so let's go back to this button let me see Doo -doo -doo. and here is our score this year our score was 49 pages of music um which is a lot <laughs> <laughs> which is why if you would like to be in the off Kai choir next year we're going to start our recruitment probably in february or march just so that way you don't feel like you have to rush to learn through all the music so december and january um i believe was mostly just kind of figuring out what we wanted to put where and then january and february was writing the actual score so we were able to get the whole score we were able to get a finished draft of the score done I believe in the middle of February, which was really impressive because even though we're not writing the music from scratch, like these are all songs that exist, right? Having to notate them, having to arrange them is a lot. <laughs> so Karina uh, did a really great job. I was really proud of the arrangement, um, but this is kind of what it looks like. You can see that we have um, four singers. You see all of the soprano, alto, tenor, bass parts all together. So that way, even though it would be easier to look at, I well, maybe not easier actually, even though it'd be less paper to have all the parts by themselves, in some ways it can be really helpful to see what's coming before you. So like if you're a soprano here, right if you know some once upon a time is not where a myth belongs that kind of gives you a cue right you know okay once they finish up i've got three beats and then i'm in myth belongs one two on through the fade right so it gives you kind of a hint as to when you come in next yes working with finale was the worst will i open up finale no <laughs> I fucking hate finale. So if you are interested in being a score writer um, or score editing volunteer next year, we're not using finale. We're using Muse score because fuck finale. Uh, I will shit on its grave. <laughs> I wouldn't like to look at 48 measures of rest. Yeah, exactly. Like if you had 48 measures of rest, even here, right? The only reason we have this multi-measure rest here for 16 bars through the um, nonfiction intro is because no one had anything here i'll turn my turn my bgm back on um but that was our next step was kind of creating the whole score creating the whole shebang right after that right what we had to do is we actually made the midi guides after that and the midi guides were pretty easy to make right let me see if i still have those because all we did with the midi guys was take the info from um the finale file right and then just make it into a, a midi file essentially so if we go back to reaper do -do -do, turn that back off you can see that all of these right here are just piano right so that way this was a way that people could get used to hearing what different parts would sound like together and learn their parts now since it's a midi guide right there isn't any lyrics to it right but it would help you learn your notes so like for example let's go right here so this is a section of night cover doesn't have the lyrics on it it's still a way that you can learn your part right and one of the things i encourage people to do as a director is still download your um all of the parts right just so that way you can hear what's going on in the background so like for example here's tenors by themselves so they have a bit of a harmony here right give me all your pride give into the villain inside right but then you can hear how that lines up with the basses Right, so even though you don't have the melody there, you can kind of hear how it connects with the melody. Especially when we get over here, for example, basses and sopranos have the melody here, but tenors are doing some background vocals. So even if you don't know what's going on, you know, with the basses, right, you can see if you download all the guides, the altos have something very similar. And what that sounds like all together, You see where everyone comes back in together right so that way people could practice and start getting a grasp for it even though we didn't have the vocal guides ready yet now what the vocal guides were and big shout out to uh my friends vivi goffrey Bron, and karina so karina also sang for some of the guides right i really love the arrangement of night cover it seemed like matara did too so i'm very happy about that <laughs> 
<laughs> also, big shout out to Odyssey Yurobi. Odyssey Yurobi, um, she wrote Night Cover for Matara. And she actually um, happened to be um, buddies with her. So I DM'd her. I was like, hey, bestie. <laughs> Do you have the MIDI files for Night Cover? And she literally sent us everything she had for Night Cover. So that made arranging this one really, really easy, right? We actually, for this one, we had to do like barely anything just because Odyssey sent us everything. So big shout out to Odyssey um, because this arranging this one was super easy because she gave us all of the vocal files, which was awesome. Um, but basically, once we did that, we then had... The vocal guides, which were sung by uh, volunteers of the choir. And again, some of these are missing. Um, but for some people, um, especially our beginners in the choir, we wanted to make things as easy for them as possible. So we had volunteers that were a little bit more experienced sing the actual parts now that they had the MIDI guides, right? So that way people could follow along. So if we go to like the same section, just for comparison, let me see. Reapers being, okay, so that's like eight minutes in. So if we go to around eight minutes in, right? Now you can kind of hear what's going on. So right here, I think it is. Night mother set me free. Running off at a time. Give me everything tonight. Yeah, a little bit earlier. Now people can kind of see what it sounds like with actual voices, with the lyrics, with the pitches. So that way they don't have to like guesstimate everything. <laughs> People can do the same thing, right? They can kind of see which parts go together. So sopranos and basses were together there, and then here, tenors and um, altos were together. Oh. And this was before uh, Goffrey was able to work out with the guides, so that's where we get a cursed tenor Evie. <laughs> I didn't have anyone to do the tenor guides, so I was like, fuck it, I'll do it myself, and um, I'm a mezzo-soprano, so there were some moments where I had to tune myself uh, lower than I could actually hit that sound really curse. Yeah, tenor Evie isn't real, she can't hurt you, where's another one? Yeah, <laughs> it sounds really robotic, so it was like... Uh, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> but then thankfully, Godfrey stepped in and that made things a hell of a lot easier. That was you? Yeah. So uh, the first half of the planetary or of the tenor guides was me. That's me. <laughs> so there were some sections where it was like fine. Like I think for like planetarium, it was fine. So this is like really comfortable in my range. But then there was also. I don't know. But there were some sections that were very low. Hi, my niggas. I don't know enough of music theory knowledge to know what's happening. Put it in layman's terms, these are the guides that everyone used to kind of practice. So people could listen to them all together, right? Just to hear kind of what's going on. Dance until the end of time. Dance, dance, dance. Need you get but then we also had a version with the instrumental. So that way people could hear what it sounds like in context. And also some of the instrumentals gave cues so people knew kind of when to come in. Oh my God, that's really loud. Holy shit, I'm so sorry. Dance until the end of time. And there you can see we have the sustain into on the rebellion in the fact. So that way, even though the layout didn't articulate that very well, right, you could kind of hear how it worked with the vocal guide. So that way, singers kind of knew what to expect. So after that, then we were kind of in, in the trenches of just learning the music. Now, the thing is, is I don't know, I wish I had musical talent. You can, bestie, anyone can. I've been teaching for six years and I still very strongly believe anyone can sing, right? I got the ratatouille approach, baby. Anyone can cook, right? What's the other thing Gusto says? Anyone can cook, but like, you gotta put your, your whole, you gotta, you gotta go all in, you know? It's one of those things where it's like, are there people that are naturally inclined with singing? Hell yeah. Right. But can anyone learn if they're willing to put the work in? Absolutely. Can you teach me the guitar? I wish. Okay. So 
I'm related. <laughs> we were talking about my age earlier. I graduated in 2021, right? So my junior year was the height of COVID. I was supposed to learn how to play guitar so I could teach other people how to play guitar. But then the fucking panorama happened. The panini press happened. And I never got to learn how, I never got to learn any guitar stuff. And I'm still kind of beefed about it, low key. <laughs> I'm interested what the first phrase you had in mind was. I forgot already. <laughs> But anyway, the first phrase, oh, yeah, that one. Um, I was getting to see, here's the thing. I know a lot of people that are watching know me just as the off-kai conductor and have, like, some idea that I am professional, but I really was about to say, if you want to learn to sing, you got to put your whole pussy into it. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's just my sense of humor. I'm sorry. Under the under the teacher veneer is a, a degenerate. <laughs> Welcome to my, my twisted mind. <laughs> But anyway, right, so after that, we were in the nitty gritty of rehearsing, right? I knew you via Phoebe. Phoebe is such an angel. I love her so much. And then there's me. <laughs> then there's me. Do that for next year? Yes. If you would like to be a choir member, there are no requirements other than putting your whole pussy and or bussy into it. You know, as long as you do that, you're good. So put PGM back on. I that it. Um, what we did after that was we did rehearsals through Discord. Now, if you've ever been in a call with the homies, right? If you've ever hung out with people on Discord, you know that if you try to sing with people on Discord at all at the same time, it is a hot mess. <laughs> it is an absolute fucking nightmare, right? Because latency is a thing, right? Especially for me, most of our choir members were on the West Coast, right? I, for one, am from the East Coast. I'm from Baltimore. You might have seen as I was scrolling through the choir Discord, all the fuck you Baltimore stickers. <laughs> but, um, so we couldn't really actually, like, do a formal rehearsal online just because of our circumstances. Uh, fun fact, we only had four rehearsals total <laughs> before we sang live on stage. That was all we did. Everything else was done online. So the way I decided to structure rehearsals to make sure people could still get my assistance and kind of know what's going on, because also not everyone could attend the rehearsals, right? I want to make sure things were accessible for people and we also had an optional rehearsal that's true is what we would do is i would take notes ahead of time of what things people should watch out for so each rehearsal contained like maybe three or four songs of the medley for us to go over and then what we would do and shout out to leaf and cake who were note taking as we as we went through the rehearsals we would talk about um what kind of is going on at each section so like big thing was like where do i have harmonies right where do you have the melody because chances are you probably if you're a vtuber fan you probably know a lot of these songs already right so a lot of it might be okay what do i need to watch out for so we'd go over who has the melodies where and if they did have the melodies what's going on so sopranos were a fifth up from um from the melody which basically means they're singing the exact same notes just transposed up by an interval of a fifth right same thing with tenors tenors were singing the same thing as uh the melody just transposed up a third right so that way we build out those chords we build out those really sexy harmonies right so that way we would also talk about um techniques for doing different things right a lot of this is just where people are um and also where you're trading off on so we would do notes like this for each rehearsal and also what we would do to make things easier for people because again not everyone could attend is we tried to record the rehearsals and upload them here now i've deleted most of these for space um i'm actually these are these are chunky right what is it does it say how how big it is because it's um chunky chunky <laughs> 160 megabits yeah so we had to i had to record a lot or delete a lot of these but that's what we would do is we would record rehearsals so people who couldn't come could read the notes and they could watch the recordings so that way they could still be included even if their work schedule or whatever didn't allow them to come to that rehearsal live in discord you know but that's how we handled rehearsals right and then after that, it was a matter of just getting everything together. So we had a master document for everyone. This was basically where all the um, info was. We did kind of um, talk about like parts for a choir, which part you should sing if you're not sure, um, types of guides provided. So just kind of like a glossary of terms like choir layout. You know, that's the file that has all the snippets from the songs right instrumental is our backing track solo midi guides are midi guides where it's nothing in the background just the midi layered midi guides were guides where it was the midi and then the instrumental in the background to see where everything fit in and i also gave some tips of how to practice the structure of the guides our rehearsal schedule right you might see stuff like this it was almost kind of like a syllabus low key right but we had spotify playlists youtube playlists and i also linked some of my own resources and of course i had to shamelessly plug my music teaching business because i'm the worst. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> but um, we also did a in-person rehearsal. So big shout out to Angie and Soul Jam because I think this helped a lot of people. So for people that were local to the Bay Area, off Expo took place in um, Burlingame, California. Uh, what Angie uh, was able to do, Angie and Soul Jam, they actually organized an in-person rehearsal for Bay Area people. So that way people could get together, meet, and practice in person. Now the way the, the in-person rehearsal worked was a little scuffed because I could not... Um, I I'm a teacher, bro. <laughs> I could not afford an extra flight to San Francisco for an extra rehearsal. So what they did is everyone gathered in person and then um, Soul Jam, uh, Soul Jam uh, hosted it and he put me on his TV. <laughs> I joined the Discord call and he put me on his TV and I basically played the music through there and conducted. And that way also people that couldn't be there at the in-person rehearsal could still come and watch. I conducted um, online and then they watched the rehearsal um, through through his TV in person. So it was kind of a scuffed setup, but I think it did really help a lot of people. And a lot of people felt really confident going into it. I even felt confident going, oh shit, my keyboard's still on. I even felt confident going into it. Which like, I got that sweet old imposter syndrome. So like feeling confident and ready for a performance um, is not normal for me. <laughs> so I felt really good going into it, you know? So we had done our rehearsals. I also gave this to staff. So something you may have noticed if you were there live is the lights changed at different times. Um, and also for rehearsal purposes, we had a document that was just timestamps with all of the, the lighting cues and whatnot for each section of the song. Um, so that way we could have like pink playing showing during end of a life for Callie or light pink for night cover for Matara, you know? Um, but yeah, so that was all we had to do to get ready for it. Do you guys want to, do you guys want to watch the performance and cringe with me? Are you ready for off choir director's cut, <laughs> director's commentary? Because, uh, <laughs> I, okay, I have watched this back. My I watched it back with my parents, so I know what I'm going into, but like, I'm still going to cringe at myself, right? Do we have to watch my speech? Do we, do we have to, uh, we have to, don't we? I'm gonna cringe at myself. I'm gonna, uh, we have VOD, yes, yeah, so if you're in the off choir Discord, it's pinned in the general chat, but let's, let's take a look, and we'll watch it together, okay? We'll watch it together. All right, let's see. Let me make sure this isn't too loud. There's everyone stepping up. Look at them go, look at my babies. They're, they're all older than me, but look at my babies! Look at them go! It's really quiet right now. Let me turn it up a little bit. If I need to turn it down, that's fine. It's you! Look at you go! So this is everyone just walking on the stage. Yes, we did rehearse how to walk on the stage. <laughs> just like any other ensemble. Uh, how to walk on stage, how to walk off. So we had everyone walk on. And they literally told me, they're like, okay, and then you're going to, everyone's going to walk on. And then you're going to wait. And I was like, huh? <laughs> so I'm just standing back here. <laughs> and I'm just waiting. Shout out to, wait, where's he at? This guy. This guy. Look at Angie. She's so cute. Also, if you heard me burp. No, you didn't. Is that guy going to do the thing? Where's the thing? I'm looking for that guy. That guy. We were also instructed not to look like we were not kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, shout out for Karina for stopping the choir. And yeah, look at him. There he goes. I love that shit. I love that shit. Everyone who did Woda during the choir, I fucking love you. But Karina stopped everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and was like, guys, don't look like you were kidnapped. Look like you want to be here. I think I can see my pen light. Hell yeah. Who the fuck is that whore? Who is that? Oh my god. Ew. Disgusting. Disg oh shit. I can't. <laughs> I can't move my bottle. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Who is that? Oh yeah. For some reason, it sounded like people were booing when I came out. And I was like, the fuck? That's me. Okay, quick thing. This wig washed me the fuck out. I'm gonna be so real. The cosplay, fantastic. The wig, ass. <laughs> it was $8 on Amazon. I didn't realize it was too dark until I got it. Um, I know my wig looks shitty. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Next time I wear this cosplay, I will have a different wig. I promise. Hey. I couldn't wear the big hat because the big hat was too heavy. We were booing like, oh, okay, that makes way more sense. I thought I just showed up and people were like, get out of here. And I was going to be like, damn. Look how cute I am. I'm so cute. I'm so fucking cute, bro. 
don't have my hat anymore, you're gonna- I'm sorry I didn't have the big hat, okay? If I had the big hat, my conducting would have been shit, okay? <laughs> You can see the expressive facial uh, expressions. Look at, look at, look at everybody. Everyone's so cute. Also, hi, Stoic. Welcome. Also, look at my legs. My legs are kind of hot. Not to be dramatic, but anyway. My job, our job, is to get you hyped up. We have a lot of really fun performances. But yeah, um, I think I cut the bangs too nice, so I very much look like I like ya, Bob. <laughs> like the boots. Look at the boots. Not to be dramatic, but I'm hot. Like my wig, shit. My thighs, sexy. Get hyped, get excited. Let me turn this up. This is Off Kai Expo. Yeah! So okay, literally, one thing I wanted to say is like, once I conducted this last year, it was so fucking Jover, right? I remember the first time I conducted this last year, I genuinely had a moment of shock because my only experience is like classical conducting, right? You start like people like golf clap in the beginning, like, oh, yes. And then people are silent throughout. And then at the very end, oh, yes, very good, right? Last year when I did this, I was not prepared for the music to come on and everyone just starts screaming. So this year I was just like, yeah, go crazy. Ah, go stupid. Ah. Get fucked up, you know? I want to see those pen lights changing colors. Yeah! Lyrics on the screen for you, baby. I, wanna hear I wanted sing people along. to sing along. Also, that was something I didn't bring up. We did have um big shout out to Generic. Generic actually did the video for us and put all the lyrics on the screen. And we're actually going to talk. Um, is it okay if I show the bottling around? It is fine with me. Um, no one's told me I can't yet, <laughs> so like I'll let you know if that changed, but no, no one's told me I can't. Just don't post it on YouTube if that's okay. I think Off Guy wants to do the post, which is fair. Look, look how happy I am. Um, but yeah, go crazy, go stupid. Are we ready? I fucking love that. Everyone that was just we had the dogs out, baby. I could not hear shit up there. This was a fun one to conduct. This one was really fun. I love Hall Alive. Yeah, you can see people moving their pen lights. Ah, that's so cute. We're going ape. That too. You can be a dog or an ape. Live your best life. Look at that cute. Clean as shit. Hi, Nico. So quick thing about our numbers. If you're wondering, like, wow, it sounds like there's not a lot of sopranos or altos. You're right. Um, our... <laughs> <laughs> the joke we made. Well, wait, you'll see. Listen to that fucking chord, baby. So, our numbers. Let me turn this down just a little bit. Our <laughs> numbers. We had three sopranos, or no, four sopranos, three altos, eight tenors. 13 basses. Half of our choir about was bass. <laughs> so we call ourselves bass boosted this year. Off choir was bass boosted. Thank you though, Nico. Okay, deadass. Hold on. Watch this. I'm gonna miss my cue. Watch it. We missed our cue here because I could not hear the music. <laughs> but I will take missing a cue because the crowd was so loud as a W. But that's why we missed our cue, because I couldn't hear the fucking music. I thought something went wrong, so my counting was off. But if you are a soprano or an alto and you're interested in singing with us, please, I will literally give you $5. I'm not joking. <laughs> yeah, but listening to the crowd is so cute. Listen to them. Yeah. really like the way I conducted this. Let me move my model low key. There we go. I am also a fan of how you conduct this. Thank you. I'm going to put chat now. I love the harmonies here. The harmonies here were so cute. I need to learn how to sing out more. Put your whole pussy hand to it. I believe in you. You just gotta sing like you have no, no fear in the world. Wait for it. That 
was so good. That was another one where it's like silent, so I had to be on it, you know? You can't really see my cue there, but it was very aggressive. <laughs> the more I was worried about someone missing their entrance, the more aggressive my cue was. But we nailed that. All right, here's the big one. So it's story time. Before we get to Planetarium, it's story time, okay? So our first in-person rehearsal, okay? I know I'm, like, edging you. Planetarium's, like, the big one. I'm edging you right now. I'm sorry. So the <laughs> Friday was our first rehearsal, okay? And we had our first rehearsal on the main stage. And Planetarium, everyone entered at the right time, but it was very iffy. You know what I mean? I was so happy at this point to see ex-PRISM songs. Yes! I wanted to honor PRISM people a lot. We planned on putting... Okay, so I'll be real. I really like Shiki, and I fucking love Ghost and Pals. When Hana Hockey Syndrome came out, it wasn't a question of if it's going in. It was a question of where am I putting it, because I fucking love that song. It goes so hard, right? But um, when we but we had Be the Light and Hana Hockey Syndrome in before Prism um, had to be shut down, and we decided to keep them in because we wanted to honor them and all their hard work, because I feel like Prism Project definitely left their mark on the VTV space, and at the end of the day, I don't care if the agency's still running or not. A banger's a banger, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> the girls deserve to be recognized, and a banger's a banger, okay? But with Planetarium, we did our rehearsal Friday, and all the entrances were like, almost there but they just weren't very confident people were still getting used to seeing with each other people were still getting used to you know my conducting in person you know and now they're the prima project hell yeah um but i felt like i walked away friday night being like okay this is pretty good right we just need to fine-tune some things we just need to clean some stuff up saturday morning and we'll be okay and we'll be fine right but then Saturday morning came. And Saturday morning, we were not rehearsing on the main stage. Saturday morning, we were rehearsing in a panel room. Which, side note, we were rehearsing in the panel room that was right next to N Nyaru's concert. Um, I actually, <laughs> Nyaru is one of my vocal students. And I was so, I talked to her earlier. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to see your concert, Bestie. And she's like, no, it's okay. Turns out, I did get to hear her concert. She sounded fucking great. She slayed. But it was so funny because I'd be, like, giving notes. And then out of nowhere, we'd hear her go, hey, hey. And we'd all just stop and go, hey, hey, <laughs> it was super cute. But because we were on a projector and not the actual main stage, there was a delay. There was a severe delay and lots of latency. <laughs> so I went from being like, oh, yeah, Planetarium sounds great. We've got this to the music being like a second ahead of where I thought it was because of the projector latency. So I was so fucked up about it. I genuinely was like, I can't. I think I had a panic attack because I was like, if we fuck this up, we're going to look so stupid. Because the thing with Planetarium, and you'll see in a second, it is like two minutes of silence and then big heavy drums, right? And if we miss the big heavy cymbal crash, we're going to be offbeat and we're going to look silly, right? So um, I would like to take that projector and beat it with a bat <laughs> because I, went, I felt so good. Yeah, I literally turned to the choir and I was like, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Because I thought we had it. And then I don't know where we didn't. And then we get to our sound check Friday and we do it. And it was perfectly fine. It like, and you'll see how it went. No spoilers. Uh, you'll see how it went. But um, I got cucked by a projector at Off Kai Expo. And I kind of fucking hated it. But anyway. This is the most proud I've ever been of an arrangement I've done. We need a shirt with that on it. Maybe I'll do it for my rhythm. Or for my ribbon next year. I met EB Games and she got cucked by a projector at Off Kai Expo. But literally, this is the best I've ever felt like an arrangement done. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite vocal arrangement, arrangement of something I've ever done. Fun fact. Those, <laughs> shout out to generic, those little light sticks you see, those are for me <laughs> because with most of the songs, I have the instrumental to help keep me on track, right? I'm able, it's really easy for me to kind of like stay in tune. I don't have to worry about, um, or stay in time. I don't have to worry about rushing too much because once I'm on it, I'm on it, right? But with this one, we had nothing. So if I was the slightest amount too slow or the slightest amount too fast, we were fucked. <laughs> so generic put those light sticks in there because I was so worried about it. And there were times where you'll see the choir rushing and then you'll see me change my movement because I'm looking up at the light sticks.
Yeah, you can see me slow down right here. And we hit it! So that cymbal crash right there needed to be exactly on the key of tie, right? So you hear the da 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 ch, right? The da 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 comes in at the da da da, right? And then if that cymbal crash wasn't on the key of tie, I would have shit myself on stage live in front of 3,000 people. But listen to it again, listen to it again. My only regret is I wish we had more sopranos and altos to fill that out. But other than that, oh my god. I was so proud of that one. Like literally, once we got through that one, it was like, I can breathe. So this one was a bitch to conduct, right? Let's talk about this one. And I think sopranos did miss a cue here, but that's okay. This one was a bitch to conduct, and I'm gonna show you why. Let me find the score, okay? Because where I cue as a conductor, let's talk about things on my end for like a split second. I'm edging you again, I'm sorry, right? So the thing with conducting, right? And the way I don't have my camera set up going because um, I have my car registration on my desk, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna do a face cam or um, a hand cam and dox myself. <laughs> I like so welcome in. But the thing with conducting is my job is to give cues so people know exactly when to come in. So like, for example, here, right? I would give a cue like right here, right? So that way the Sopranos and Oz have been singing, but the tenors and basses haven't. So that way they know when to come in because they see me go, Hwah! you know, I can't, I don't have my 3D model on right now. I don't have hands, but I do a little funky. Hwah! So that way they know for sure when to come in, right? But pretty much when it's ever a section hasn't been singing for a while, right? My job is to give them a cue. Right? So, for example, Karina wrote this part. Yeah, because Karina fucking hates me because I haven't paid my child support to her. Um, am I joking or am I not joking? You decide. Um, but basically, so we have those four bars of rest. Alto cue right here on the huh. And then right here, cue on beat two for sopranos. And keep in mind, the tempo here is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? So the way it works is it's one, two, three, altos. Huh. Soprano. Huh. Tenor bass, huh, then alto, right? So tenor bass, huh, then two beats, huh, then three beats, <laughs> then soprano cue. So it's all just like Q, Q, Q. And it goes really fast. <laughs> so this lection was kind of a bitch to conduct. Once we got to here, the golden kiss, the solar eclipse of heaven's gates. So that was fine. But this intro, whoo, brutal, right? Let's go back to it. Like, that was fine. That was super fucking easy. I'm just keeping time at that point. Literally had a good fix to me. TLDR, layman's terms. I had to move my arms real fast there, and it stressed me out. <laughs> now watch me right here. So... This was also a fucking awful cue because what's happening here, right? And we'll look at the sheet music, so I'll tell you, tell you why, right? It's over here. Make way for you for me. It goes from three, four, right? So three beats per measure to cut time, two beats per measure. Now you might notice, you might see if you were there live, you might be like, Evie, why the fuck did you conduct this in four if it's in cut time? Because the way the melody works is it's all quarter notes. Da, 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 da. Right? So even though it was in cut time, it just felt like it made more sense to conduct it in four low-key. Just a very, very fast four. <laughs> like, it was like 190. Ah, thank you, Blacksmith! So, we had this hold here in one tempo, one time signature. Then we changed BPM to another time signature, and they come in on basically beat one of Golden Age. So you can see here, and I'll back it up, that I give the, the, surprise of their altos the, here for me all. 
And as soon as they start holding that, I conduct a full measure in that super fast tempo for tenors and bass, and then I give them one. So they get their hold, make way for euphoria, one, two, three, four, one. And so that way they come in right on time at the sound out the song of Splendor. Because this is one of those transitions where it sounds cool in the, in the instrumental, it sounds cool live, but musically, it was a bitch and a half. So I'll show you one more time. Two, three, four, one. How do you even practice that? Carefully. I So my practice, what I did to practice conducting Deadass, is I mostly conducted with the vocal guides and with the instrumental. So that way I could still practice timing and stuff like that. I love the harmonies here. I'm pretty sure I'd have to dislocate something if I had to do that. My arms did hurt afterwards. I did train myself by wearing arm weights whenever I conducted, so that way I could do it without running out of breath. And I didn't run out of breath, but I was sore. This was another section that was hard because we go from, okay, if I'm conducting in four, Right, that was like 190 BPM. We go from essentially one quarter note equals 190 right here, right? To then down here, quarter note equals 92. So we essentially half <laughs> the tempo here. So I had to like be ready to slow down here. So you see how I slow down preemptively. Goku learning how to conduct. Honestly, yeah. It's a 13 minute long medley and I get no breaks. Look at me feeling cute here. I, I felt a little cute here, okay? I was I was bobbing, okay? This is the one I think sound the best and you'll see why in a second. All of them sound good, but this one was where I was like, I think I just met God and ascended. Woo! That hideout! This, this fucked so hard. Be the life is the bane of my existence. It was a bitch to arrange, but you did such a good job, Karina. How are your arms after? Ow. <laughs> Oof, ouchie! <laughs> yeah, figuring out some of these rhythms was, was brutal. That's me! So, fun fact about this one. <laughs> so, when we were doing our sound check, um, oh my god, the fucking BGM's still on. When we were doing our sound check, a few people walked in while we were doing sound check. And we thought it was just like the people that bought like the whale or the double rainbow, like the special badges. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Didn't think too much of it. So we were rehearsing, but we were also kind of dicking around, you know, like, because we knew it at that point. So we were having fun with it, you know, and I was, I was hyping up my choir. I was going like, what are we going to do? And they'd go, we're going to lock the fuck in. And I was like, yeah. So I was like doing a lot of that. And we, we ran through it twice. And, and, and these people come in. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And, um, those people were Matarakan and Maidman. And I just... I, I'm so normal. I'm really, really normal. I'm so normal. Really? Yes. Matarakan and Takanashi Kiara tweeted about the choir on their Twitter. And they really liked it. Which means they have now perceived me. And I, uh... Huh? <laughs> I'm so normal, bro! I'M SO NORMAL! <laughs> we did really good at this one, though. Which one is your Oshi? So, Matara is one of my Oshis. I do really love Kiara, though. Kiara is definitely one of my favorites. Um, but I, I fucking love Matara. <laughs> I was... There were a lot of YouTubers watching us. Yeah! But seeing that they were in the front row, I'm like, ugh. No pressure though, no pressure! <laughs> oh yeah, all these VTubers that you love and look up to are watching you conduct- NO PRESSURE! <laughs> we were a little bit off on this one, 
but I'll tell you why. We did recover, which is good. We were a little bit off. This one was also a bitch to conduct because this one is, again, another really drastic tempo change, right? So right here, 162. Quarter note equals 162. And then we go to, where was it? Quarter note equals 130, which isn't drastic. But the other thing that's weird about this one, this song starts off the beat. We don't start on beat one. We start on beat on beat um the and of one right so it's but da, 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 da. so i tried to be really dramatic with my cue and i was very aggressive and like look at me choir you need to look at me fucking look at me <laughs> so i tried to be really aggressive but i guess my my this is my feedback for myself i guess i need to be more aggressive you know but that's why this one was hard is because we slow down and we come in off the beat which feels weird for sure Quite like guess we're mixing with the double rainbow and whale seating. Yeah, I'm really normal about it. Like it didn't even phase me, you know. See how normal I am? I'm so normal. Also, alto or sopranos slay. Alto slay. Tenors slay. This was our tenor bass feature. I wanted to give the boys a moment. This is their moment. They didn't really go with this one. Listen to that harmony, bro. And then altos. <laughs> the one person losing they shit at end of a life is me. This sounded really pretty in person, too. Hold up. Thank you, Barksner! Playback is just VTuber ass. Mona Monet, thank you for having your ass grade 3,000 people. This was another one that was a bitch to conduct. Well, I, I'm, I'm gonna edge you again, okay? Okay, we're being edged now. So, the <laughs> this is another one where fucking. Okay, look at my cues. Look at my cues. Where is it? Okay, so here, that one was fine. Emma Life was fine. One, two, enter. One, two, key code. One, two, access. One, two, grant. Like, this was fine. This was fine. But then here, one, two, new world. One, two, the time has come. Come, oh, two, eyes wide. No, right? See how back and forth this is? And then I gotta go to the fucking tenors, too, right? Find out, go, answer, ready for the show. Right? Then there's just a one low cue right over here. This is fucking awful. <laughs> like, I got it. Um, when you show the alto, the tenor, the run, and we both threw it. Yeah, it was like, it sounds really good. And it worked out really good. But fuck. <laughs> I'm never doing that again. I'm every conductor's nightmare. Yeah, you are. I was going to shit myself. <laughs> but I didn't. And it worked out because I practiced very hard. And I worked very hard. But fuck. <laughs> I was a little scared. I think I even told them. I literally was like, okay, guys, I'm going to try to cue all these. But please, for the love of God, count. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I'm screaming. Please count. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> but it worked out. So, you know, it's cool. That's not really pretty. Go Sopranos, hello. But yes, Karina is the person that wrote half the score. Big shout out to Karina. I wrote parts one and three and Karina wrote parts two and four. That was so nice. I 
Happy birthday, Karina. This was our finale. Oh, this is that harmony. Okay, fun fact. <laughs> Another behind the scenes fun fact. So, when we first wrote this one, we wrote the harmonies wrong because me, Karina, and Bron had been working on the arrangement for like four hours in call at that point, and our ears just didn't work. So, I think in like April, we had to go through and rewrite all the harmonies because they just didn't fucking work. <laughs> but we didn't notice because our ears were so like, <laughs> by that time <laughs> so i'm glad the harmonies sound good but we literally looked back like someone was like hey the harmonies sound kind of weird here and we looked back and we were like wow they really do huh what were we thinking <laughs> but our brains just just stopped working you know your ear gets tired man Oh, that's so good. I was like crying, bro. There was tears in my eyes. Do we have to watch my speech at the end? Because my speech gets kind of emo. Do we have to? The last note was me. You slayed that, girl. That was so fucking good. Okay, we'll watch my speech. You wrote that chord. You did write that chord. It was slay. And then everyone gets a moment to bow. Then I'm going to look at me. Look at my little shuffle. Look at my little shuffle. Sopranos. And then that's the credits. You can't see it, but I'm making everyone bow. I want to honor everyone. And then I give a little speech. And now I'm just gonna... Can, do I have to watch my speech? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say a few words before um, Let me just... we get started with the show. Thank you so much for your hype. I don't want to look energy. at myself. It fuels me this time. Ugh. When we did this, um, I was a band teacher whose program just got cut. Uh, and I spent... <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I was like, yeah, my band program just got cut. The audience just went, aww. It's like, yeah, you should aww. That was fucked. Know, right? Get okay, back to my hiding. Um, and I spent all my time, uh, they literally like wouldn't let me leave. I taught for an hour and a half. That was and fucked leave. up. And Holding me hostage. I spent all my time working on the score. I wrote the entire score myself, and it was really, really hard. But this year, it was a lot. an amazing team. We had... Volunteers, we had our size has grown, and uh, there's one person I really want to thank. Mega Karina, she knows it's coming. She knows it's fucking coming. Arrange half the score. Uh, I just want to give a special thanks to my friend Karina. Yay, Karina! Karina is so epic. I love you, Karina. I, I also got her pregnant at the Afkai Expo. And this year, it was pretty I quit cool. School, and I teach VTubers how to sing for a living. Yeah, I quit my job. Fuck them kids. I really did highly consider saying fuck them kids as part of my speech, but I was like, someone's going to clip that out of context, and I'm going to get canceled on Twitter. But, like, fuck them kids, bro. I hated teaching at school. <laughs> teaching me too is so much more fun. <laughs> this did fuck me up. Once Off-Kai Expo happened last year, it was impossible to go back to school, and I want to thank you guys for giving me the courage to go where I am wanted. Chill. Okay, some of those kids might be VTubers one day. I mean, you're right, but okay. Here's the uncensored version, okay? When you have a crowd of people cheering for you, telling you thank you, telling you that they're, they're big fans of your work, that they're proud of you and they, they think you're great, you cannot, it is physically impossible to go back into a classroom and have someone say, Miss Evie, I think you're fat. <laughs> Miss Evie, you're a cunt, you know? Like, it's one of those things where it's like, bro, like, anytime something bad happened at school, I'd be like, I could be teaching VTubers right now. I could be teaching, I, I could be doing off Kai Expo stuff right now. Or a pendejo. I did get called a pendejo a few times. And I didn't even do anything crazy. It was literally just like, 
Hey guys, can we sit in our seat? Hey guys, can we not throw pencils? Hey guys, can we not call each other racial slurs? And then I got called a racial slur. For, uh, I, I don't understand. Yeah, side note, that was one of the weirdest things. What, like, you can see, like, right here and right here. I got called the N-word. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Why'd they call me the N-word when I have the most Caucasian ca Caucasian that has ever caucasitied? I'm from fucking Florida. Like, that doesn't make sense. Huh? Anyway. I the VTuber community. And I am forever I love grateful VTubers. for the opportunity to do projects like this. They're so nice to me. Help people become the and they give me more money than the public so school system did. Which is kind of fucked up yes. that um, VTuber teacher makes more money than actual teacher. But um, right. Thank you, it is what it is. And then we all started coming out. I've seen Milk Dark in the I mean, listen. Thank God VTubers are at somewhat adult age. Oh, yeah. Someone also shouted out America, y'all, yeah, right here. So I had to go sing hello. Um, I don't know if it caught on, but you can't really hear it. But someone went, America, ya, yeah, And I went, hello. But, yeah. That was, that was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can't really hear it, but that's okay. But, yeah. That was the Off Kai Expo. That was the, the, the thing. I, I did that. I did that. Yippee! How did that not become a meme until now? I have no idea, Bestie. I really, I really don't know. It's a good meme, though. It's a good, it's a good fucking meme. But yeah, that's what I've been working on for um, <laughs> my friends that don't know me from Offkai. If you are new here um, and you learned about me from Offkai, welcome. Um, I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry I'm not more professional. I'm kind of a dingus. Oh, um, <laughs> we're at a different time. Um... But thank you, gamers. I, I, that's what I've been working on for the past six months. And now it's over. And I did admittedly have a big moment of, damn, now what? Oh. <laughs> so I actually do have a few announcements. I actually have some announcements for you guys. Oh, oh, she's not done. Oh, oh. So first announcement. Uh, oh, thank you for the hydrate stoic. Thank you for the posture check. Now, now stoic is edging us before I give the announcement. So, mm, okay, yeah, I need to stop saying edging so casually, but it's so funny. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. So, next announcement. I will be a featured panelist at Hentai Matchery. That's right. If you weren't sure about my content before, now you know what the fuck is up now. <laughs> I will be attending Hentai Matsuri virtually, and I will be doing a Skyrim Smasher Pass panel. I have also been told that there's a designated topless area, so I'm hoping I can see some tits. And I will show off tits. Not my tits, but tits in Skyrim. So if you are in the San Diego area and you like Skyrim and you like boobs, then please consider attending Hentai Matsuri. I'm not sure what a hentai is though. I'm a visual learner. Um, you know, Google. You can, you can just Google it. Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia that anyone can edit, you know? So... I will be doing a panel about Skyrim, about sexy Skyrim modding, and a smasher pass uh, with Skyrim NPCs. I'm very excited. I'll also be soft launching my new model there. Uh, so if you want a preview of the new model before it debuts on my birthday, then that is coming up soon too. Also, second announcement. I don't have a, an official announcement. <laughs> she just got here. She's I just got here. She's talking about tits. What do we say? No good time for an EB game stream. And then also, wait, let me pull it up. I don't have the official announcement done yet, but <laughs> I forgot to. <laughs> I'm going to be debuting my Skyrim model fucking finally. Why would you debut your new model at, Hen at Hentai Matsuri? Because it's a Skyrim themed model and I'm doing a, I'm doing a Skyrim panel. And there's tit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Although, the new model does have thighs, okay? As you guys know, if you're a long-time EB Games fan, uh, you know that um, I don't have any fucking legs. Um, so, you know, uh, <laughs> we didn't have legs in the budget. So now, now I'm going to have thighs, okay? We didn't get feet yet. We haven't gotten feet yet. Oh, it zooms out too much. Whoopsie. Uh, can I just... 
full screen it, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, there we go. So we didn't have thighs in the budget, right? But, or we didn't have feet in the budget, but we do have thighs. So the model with this design, ooh, tentacles, ooh, scary, ooh, Daedric Prince, ooh, Hermeos Moro, is going to be debuting, soft debut at Hentai Matsuri, and then we are going to be doing a donathon. I haven't done a donathon, subathon in like six billion years. Uh, what has prompted this donathon is um, I had to pay twenty five hundred dollars to the IRS in taxes this year, and it really fucked me up. <laughs> So I'm hoping this donathon will be to celebrate my birthday and to help build up my savings account um, because I don't have that anymore. <laughs> so I'll be doing a donathon. These are not the complete goals, by the way. Um, I'm not done yet. So these are the base goals. Um, but after that, we will be doing stretch goals. So we have um, we also have a punishment wheel. Every one hundred dollars will be a punishment wheel. I don't know what's gonna go on that punishment wheel yet. Um, it might be i'm thinking about like buying one of those like shot collars as an option i feel like that could be fun um i also might drink ranch um i think that i don't know if that's a punishment for me though i kind of just like drinking ranch in general you know so if you have punishment wheel ideas maybe i could even like flirt with you guys or something although i don't know if you guys want that like i, I don't <laughs> I'm kind of the worst. Maybe we can get Dave to flirt with you. I don't know. You know, Ram. Oh, I love Ram Ranch. And Ram Ranch isn't a punishment. Ram Ranch is a reward, baby. <laughs> 18 naked cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch. <laughs> but um, I don't know what all what all we're going to do yet. Uh, I'm trying to put my hair back down, but I don't remember what the button is to put my hair down. Can I have my hair? That's a fucking whole ass different outfit. That's okay. I volunteer for Evie flirting. Flirt with us with Jen Alpha Slank. You know what? Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll, like, soon do Gen Alpha. Like, well, you know, I don't really think you're that skibbity. But maybe we could be Livy Dunn and Baby Gronk together. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> like, with that, do we want that as part of the punishment wheel? Because it sounds fucking awful. Okay, let me let me write that down. So what, what, let me write this in this Discord. Hold up. Um, by the way, I have a Discord. Um, if you wanna, if you want a say and stuff I do for, for Donathon, that's there. So let me see. Okay. Punishment wheel. Okay. So how expensive is a shot collar? Cause I'm down to buy one dead ass. Like if it's like $50, then maybe not. But if it's like $20, I'll buy a shot collar. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'll do it for content. I'm not above it. Um. This is for dogs. Is it safe for people? Here, let me reiterate. Shot collar for people. Uh, these are kind of expensive. Maybe we could... Do they make, like, shot... Because I don't want to kill myself on accident. That would be bad. Even if it's banned from Twitch for kink content. Is that a kink? Yeah, don't buy a shot collar. What the fuck is wrong with you? But it's for content, Davey! wheel will you buy me a shot collar no. oh okay oh <laughs> yeah it was one of the great things about off guys i got to meet a lot of, uh some of my gamers in person and then my gamers got to meet david in person and david got flirted with a lot at off guy expo david got flirted with more than i did <laughs> um okay there's for small dogs would i count as a small dog or like a medium dog a big dog I, <laughs> I think one of the rules is be careful about self-harm on Twitch. Oh, okay. Does it count as self-harm if I like it, though? Well, I don't know if I'm going to like it, but, like, what if I do? You know? If you like it, that crosses into the kink thing. Oh, so I can't win. Oh, we got to come up with more punishment wheel stuff. Okay. Um, So keep it, keep an ear out for that. Okay, so definitely ranch shot. Um, What about pilk? Yeah, we can do pilk shots. Okay. Um... Let's see. Flirt, um... Let's see. Flirt with chat with Gen Alpha Slang. That sounds awful. I'm into it. I feel like we need, like, two more. Because I don't want to just do shots. We can't just do ranch shots, pilk shots, hot sauce. I did hot sauce shots before. I drank hot sauce out of a wine glass one time, and I almost threw up. It was really funny. Um, let me see. No offense, small dogs are just small. 
What's that supposed to mean? Like, <laughs> drink soy sauce on my bottom. I'm so bad. I'm bad with punishment wheel ideas. I'll have to look at that into that. We'll we'll come up with. We need like two more at least, you know. Because David won't let me get a shot caller. I'm sorry. I don't want you to accidentally kill yourself. <laughs> but these are the goals I have so far. We are going to do stretch goals for merch and stuff like that. I really wanted to fund merch for my Skyrim model debut. Um, but unfortunately, I can't afford it. So what I'm hoping is with this donathon, if it goes well, um, we'll be able to do merch for not the debut. Um, but oh, we can do that. Karaoke is... Um, oh, we could do karaoke. We'll do character karaoke. So I could do like... Um, what are some voice impressions I can do? Um... I could do Toad. We could do Toad. Uh, we'll do Sing a Song as Toad. Okay. Um, I could do Toad or Jennifer Coolidge. I can do Jennifer Coolidge. Um, what's another character impression I can do? Um, I can do Nico from League of Legends, but I don't know if that's like funny enough. Low key. I don't know. We'll do Toad or Jennifer Coolidge, or we'll like do it. Maybe I'll do it as like a a, a duet between the two, a love song between. Can you imagine like magnet between like Jennifer Coolidge and Toad? Oh my god, that'd be crazy. Um, what's another one we could do? Hmm, I don't know. I have to think on that, but that's one. Okay, we just need one more thing. Okay, but um, yeah. So basically, if it goes well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a Skyrim model, like a Skyrim themed merch drop for my um fourth anniversary. That's my goal. Is if um we meet our stretch goals, um, we're gonna do a Skyrim model themed merch drop for uh, my fourth streaming anniversary, which is in August. So we'll still hopefully, if Donathon goes well, we'll still hopefully get um merch for the skyrim model it just won't be on debut um but honestly i just i've been wanting to debut this model for like two fucking years but life and work uh just kept getting in the way so i wasn't able to hi jingle um but i just i really want to debut it so i'm like fuck it i don't i'll be honest there was a lot more i wanted to do i wanted to have a really big in-depth lore video i wanted to have merch on debut but i just didn't have the funds for it you know but I just want to get her out there because she's hot, okay? Like, she's she's so fucking hot, okay? she The world needs to see her, okay? She has a fucking sans undertale eye. Look at that shit. The world needs it, okay? So we have the punishment wheel. We have, of course, the basic ones. Like, chat decides on a profile picture for me for, like, a month. Chat orders a pizza for me and Dave. Um, so if you want to give us none pizza with left beef, um, David will have the honors of picking up none pizza with left beef. Um, well, uh, 75 is 100% orange juice with pals. And this may be revised, but this is just kind of, like, what I got so far. Um, uh, 125 is making Skyrim NPCs out of Play-Doh. <laughs> Because it sounds really stupid, but fun. <laughs> and then for 150, um, one of my last goals that we never got to that we're doing now is we're, David is making us a mod list. Um, if you, a lot of people found me through my viral clip of David deleting Whiterun. That was from a donathon where David made me a mod list before. And he's going to make us another one. And if we hit the 150 goal, chat will decide on our character for that one. <laughs> um, if we hit 175, we will make, oh shit, my fucking headphones just got unplugged. Ah! Another karaoke idea. Sing it in two eggs. <gasps> That's a good idea, actually. I don't usually do karaoke streams just because, like, I don't really do them because I sing as a job. So a lot of times when I'm streaming, I'm like, singing? Ew, disgusting. Um, but I feel like that could be a good punishment wheel. Let's do, let's add that one. That could be fun. We can always add more. I said five, but that's like the minimum. Uh, sing a song at 2x speed. Oh, God, some of the songs could be, <laughs> could be rough. That could be, that could be hard. Um, Every 100 is going to be a punishment wheel spin. Um, 20, 250, I'm going to gather my friends for our Yowie farm. We have an eight-person Stardew Valley save. It's very chaotic, and we call ourselves Yowie Farm 2. Um, because I fucked up the save when I made Yowie Farm 1. Um, so it would be a very, very interesting collab. Um, and then 450, I will do a Smash and Pass stream with your guys' Skyrim OCs or your VTubers or whatever you want to send in. Um, and then for 500... Uh, as our final goal before we get to the stretch schools, I will do a made ASMR stream. Am I being for real? Am I memeing? Who fucking knows? <laughs> so we might get Gap Moe EB content. I don't, I, I don't know if I can be Gap Moe, but I'm gonna try. What's a good liquor to go with ranch? Oh, shit. <laughs> 
Can you imagine ranch and like tequila? Oh shit, ranch and vodka. I mean, isn't ranch water an alcoholic beverage? When I was younger, when I would see ranch water on like a bar menu, I thought it was literally, like I literally thought it was like sparkling, like water, vodka, and ranch. Like I literally thought that's what it was. And I've been, I've since then been informed that that's not what ranch water is. <laughs> <laughs> but you know anything black licorice based Ooh, that could be a good one we could also do bean boozled i used to have a bean boozled set and i don't know where it was so that could be every uh every wheel spin we do a bean boozled let's do that let's add that too that's a good idea hello Zenenia. let's see bean boozled so i have to find that again i know i have it somewhere um so every hundred is gonna be a punishment wheel and then pass out we're gonna do some stretch goals uh for like merch and stuff like that so i'm still tinkering it you know i'm still gonna figure it out malort <laughs> what's malort what's that is that a type of malort or is it pronounced like malor malort sounds fun to say though <laughs> I don't know much about alcohol. I don't drink a whole lot. I feel like people think I'm the type of person to drink a lot, but I don't because I'm a baby. I have this weird thing that happens where like if I drink a drink that's too sweet, I lose all feeling in my like left arm. I don't know why that is. Um, I've a few people have told me I might have nerve damage, but like <laughs> it is what it is, you know, it's the worst alcohol made by mankind. I'm sure we can find it. That sounds scary. It what it is good news though i finally have the time to go to a doctor about my perpetual tummy issues <laughs> i got a good one gamer malora is a terrible tasting drink from chicago well that explains it oh it's swedish and it's from chicago oh my god pick a struggle let's let's write that down we'll write that down on the punishment wheel too my lord we'll probably do um a few other things i also have like a schedule plan for the donathon as well um but that will be on my birthday so my birthday is at the very end of this month is on june 30th it will be on a sunday we're gonna start at like 12 30 p.m est we're gonna do a lead up like we're gonna like my plan right now is to do like 12 hours probably and then we're gonna lead up to the model reveal and then at my normal stream time we're gonna do the actual model debut and then the rest of it is gonna be um with the model and stuff like that. You know, that's what I'm thinking right now, but I don't know for sure. Hot dog water? Okay, I'll have to find hot dogs, but that could be an option as well. I don't know how David's gonna be able fe gonna feel <laughs> about us just like having hot dog water. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's possible. Can we do a birthday collab? Mine is on the 23rd. I usually don't do collabs with people unless I know them IRL or I'm really close with them, but we might be able to do some viewer games or something like that. That could be, that could be an option. Would you guys want to do like Gardic phone or something like that? I'm just always hesitant about doing like Gardic phone or Jackbox with like, um, on stream because like so many people I know do games like that on stream and then randoms come in and start doing racial slurs <laughs> and that's, um, not good <laughs> so maybe we'll do something like that off the afraid of jacking it with the view no i'm not afraid of jacking it with you guys i just don't want people to say racial slurs i i have standards <laughs> i have standards you know but yeah so we'll figure something out maybe maybe we'll do that maybe we'll do i don't know i don't want to stream league of legends because if i stream league of legends you guys will just make fun of me <laughs> But yeah, um, so I think that's, that's what we're planning on, but that'll be on June 30th. Uh, it'll probably be a 12 hour cap, maybe 14 or 15 hours. We'll have to see what the vibes are. Another stream, we just put just chatting instead of Jack in the Box in the, oh, okay. That might be what we do. So we might do that. Would that be, would that be something we'd be interested in? We can definitely add that to the list. Let's do, let's do Gardic Phone. Gardic Phone, I feel like is the safer option. You know what I mean? Jet, Bogartic phone with viewers. There we go. Perfect. We'll add that to the list too. But yeah, so big things coming. <laughs> um, I will be at Hentai Matsuri on Saturday. The official announcement should be coming soon. Um, but they told me I could announce it to you guys. But I will be there on the 15th of June. Weekly JO charging sessions in the VIP section of the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta charge our jack off crystals, bro. We gotta charge them up. But yeah, so what do you mean, hello? Like, if you are a VIP, we all we all charge our JO crystals together. That's a joke. That is a joke. <laughs> That's a joke. Okay. We also might do um I don't know. We might do some Disney merch review too as part of the stream. I've been wanting to do that for a while too. So we'll definitely I'll have a finalized schedule probably on like the fifteenth, probably by my hentai matsuri panel date. Um, I'm still working some things out, but I think it'll be 
it'll be a lot of fun. So let me see. Let me see. Um, I think it might be a joke to you, Evie, but my J.O. Crystal is charged. Fuck yeah! Review the Star Wars cups. Oh my god. See, I've wanted to do another Disney revert, uh, merch review stream for a while because ever since we saw... What was the Crocs that we saw that were really gross? I don't remember. I think they were Marvel Crocs and they were like... They, they were something else. I think we'll do another cuter cringe with the, the Disney merch. Because I've been wanting to do that too. There's also a ride-through video of Tiana's Bayou Adventure out. And I kind of want to look at that. But I also heard a rumor that apparently it caught on fire. Which is like... Hmm. Uh, don't talk shit about the Margaritaville Crocs. The Margaritaville Crocs are great. No, not Marble. Marble. <laughs> the Margaritaville Crocs slap. If you can't accept me at my Margaritaville Crocs, then you don't deserve me at my thigh highs. Okay? Like... <laughs> actually... Can I get art of myself? Could that be a Donathan goal? Art of Eevee with the Margaritaville Crocs. <laughs> like, it's really sexy. Like, it's really, like, sexy, lewd, like, kind of art. And then I'm just wearing the Margaritaville Crocs. I think that would be great, actually. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna call it NSFW Margaritaville EB art. Because that's... That makes perfect sense. <laughs> but, yeah. So... Gamers, I'm gonna be real. We're we're gonna end this stream because I have to pee really bad and I'm out of things to talk about. <laughs> but I am back. So let's take a look at our schedule for the week. So this week, like I said, I am back in business. I am back to streaming again. We are going to be also look at me in my swimsuit. Aren't I cute? I'm so cute. Uh, we can talk about hot takes on Disney theme parks. We started a hot take stream and we never finished it. Like we got through Magic Kingdom hot takes and we didn't get through the rest of them. So we should do that. That's a good idea too. But um, we will be doing our, since this is my first week back streaming, I wanted to keep it to just Skyrim, just my chill cozy games. Um, so Friday we're going to be doing our Wench acquisition playthrough and then Sunday we'll be back to our Vanya playthrough. But I actually already have the schedule for next week planned out that ass i don't think i added the art to it yet but next week we've got a lot of stuff uh to do too so next week we're gonna be opening my rift runners box so if you were at off guy expo you might have seen the rift runners guy uh thank you what the fuck i just got a tornado alert it says take shelter now um well i'm already in a basement so it works out um uh <laughs> Sorry for the tornado alert jump scare. I hope I don't die. Um, I, sh I should, well, I've got a few, I've got time. Oh. <laughs> but um, well, Wednesday we'll be opening my Rift Runners box. If you're at Elkai Expo, I am in Rift Runners, which is a VTuber card game. And I actually pulled a foil of myself on the first pack that I opened that was from Off Guy Expo. But I do have a full bo booster box to open. So we're going to open that up on Wednesday. Friday, you guys are going to hang out with me when um, we prepare the Hentai Matsuri panel prep. Because a lot of y'all are experts, experts on hot Skyrim women. So I want to consult the council on... Um, what Skyrim women I include, and then Sunday we'll do more Skyrim. But we've got we've got a packed few weeks coming. It'll be a lot of fun. So, gamers, without further ado, here is my Discord. Here is my Twitter. Uh, Jingle's already on it. God bless. I also have a YouTube, and I'm also writing a book. <laughs> so let's see who we can raid, who we can send our love and affection to, because I need to find shelter, and then I need to pee. <laughs> so we're gonna go raid. Who all is streaming tonight? We're gonna go raid, uh, actually, let's read, uh, Odyssey, just because we talked about her earlier today, um, just because she did the arrangement for, or she didn't do the arrangement, but she wrote, uh, the song, Night Cover, that we sang in the choir, so we're gonna raid her, let me see, Odyssey, can I yell this, or sell this, spell this right, you're a beat, we're gonna raid her, and we're gonna say, um, what should we make as our raid message, I don't know, um, let's just say, We'll go EB raid. So let me do the little the little thingies. Let me do da da da. Okay, there we go. Then EB raid. Da da da. Okay, there you go. There's your there's your raid, raid message. Night cover. Oh, night cover reference. That would be cool. Um, let's just go EB raid. We'll keep it simple because I'm not gonna lie. The tornado. It said seek shelter immediately, so I feel like I should do that. <laughs> all right. Bye, gamers. I will see you all on Friday.